Nation covering some of y'all's questions. I do have the question feed on my phone, so I'm going to try to run through, through there and answer questions. We're going to try to fireside. Uh, some of this go real fast. Um, obviously, on some of our, a couple of our past lives that we've done, we kind of wanted to get into the weeds and talk about certain things. I know Isaac wants to talk about we'll some get into of the weeds again how too. night vision is made and why it's expensive and other things like that. I'm obviously here to talk about some of the gear and use and whatnot because I do quite a bit of night vision stuff and obviously try a lot of different gear. We've got a few items here, a bunch of different lasers, the new N-Gol, um, Mauls, Pec 2s, Pec 15s, LA 5s. Uh, there's some guns back there and different setups. And I actually have a gun right here that I may throw some stuff on to demonstrate a few things. Yeah. But uh, without further ado, I want to go ahead and cover probably, we'll get this question out of the way because it's the one that gets asked the most. And that is, how can I get into night vision on a budget? Well, I'm afraid I'm here to tell you that in the year 2020, you're not going to get into night vision very well with just $1,000 or even just with $2,000 like some people think they can do or $500. I literally had people messaging me when uh, the latest Call of Duty came out and they had the premium edition with the digital quads saying, is this good night vision? It was like 120 bucks. And I was like, uh, no, that's actually not. Um, so there's a lot of obviously misconceptions about night vision out there, what it costs, how good it is, blah, blah, blah. And the reality is to get into night vision in a way that's pretty effective, you're looking at minimum about $4,000. Maybe three if yeah. you're really smart about what you do and you buy used and you find some stuff and yeah. you score some good deals. But and there's different levels of effectiveness. And there so are. we can talk a little bit about what you would need to do X, what you would need to do Y, what you would need to do Z. So. Yep, so there's obviously, uh, but I kind of tell people it's three to four, um, and then what you're looking at is a analog, obviously, because digital is not good enough yet. I can talk about that in a little bit, but you got PBS 14s, which um, there's one here, right? Did David bring us one? Uh, well, yes. Oh, yeah, that one. That was a, that's a 14. I'll grab you. Well, this is not quite a 14. Eh. It's this is an actual 14. Oh, good. Here's an actual 14. So basically... The, the most default option people end up going with is this, and we need to cover those up, is a PVS-14 like this one right here. Now, the uh, housings are made by a lot of different companies, and yep. then the night vision tube is inserted, which is made by a couple companies, two or three, something like that. And uh, you're looking at for a Gen 3, and then they vary in quality uh, based on you know the tube and where it was made and how it was made. But how old it is? How old it is? Like how much old, wear and tear it's got? Gen 3 that's had a lot of hours uh, is going to not be as good as a brand new one. Uh, but you're looking at for a green phosphor, a white phosphor, somewhere between about 1600. If you get one used, uh, that was about what I paid for the first one uh, that I bought. That was five years ago, four and a half years ago. It was a Franken AB tube or AB housing with a Franken tube something. Um, and it was a, you know, Gen 3 green tube. It's not bad, but that's what I uh, trained with. That was my first night vision introduction into night vision. That was $1,600. So you're looking at $1,600 to three grand if you get like a brand new Omni 8 PBS 14 green, uh, possibly white phosphor. Um, that's what you're looking at for one of these. Uh, then you can get you know, a cheap Rhino mount potentially uh, to attach to your helmet, and then you just have one of these over um, a single eye. So that's really your best option. There's a lot of accessories out for these, so pretty easy to find. Uh, pretty easy to find use because there's just so many PBS-14s on the market. Yeah, and I would say you can save a lot of money by getting used, but you also want to do your research. This is something where you, you should understand hard what it is that you're actually buying and what life you can expect out of the different tube types and what the different blemishes uh, might mean and whether or not they're things you can live with. Um, so yeah, you could save a lot of money, but you could also blow a lot of money by buying a used thing that's not researched well. So I know this is boring, but do your research and uh, it'll be worth it. Yep. A uh, big thing to ask for is uh, obviously blims in the tube. Uh, most good resellers will take a good photo straight through the tube. Um, and generally speaking, some bl blims are going to bring the price down. I had some blims in mind, which brought the price down to 1600 And they weren't horrible blims. They were down in the corners. They were on the sides. They weren't in the center. So it's fine. And running around in some lighting conditions, you're not going to notice them anyway. The only time you'll really notice them is if you like flash your IR illuminator on a wall and then you go, oh, I can see it way down here. So yeah. location of the blims uh, can be a big deal or not. Uh, but you can generally get a cheaper uh, night vision unit if it is if it has some blims, little black spots inside. Um, so this is a good option right here. Fix audio. 
can't hear it in my ear. You guys keep cutting off. They're working on it. They're working on it. They got two people over there working on it. Um, there's no. <laughs> people are asking about digital. All right, people are asking about digital. Why don't you talk about digital? All right. Well, why don't you get into this have... while I take a break from all that talking? Unfortunately, you took the whole table up with your stuff, so my stuff has to sit on the floor. <laughs> but um, a bunch of you guys know about the Psionics Aurora. This is an original Psionics Aurora. There's also an Aurora Pro that I'm looking forward to testing, but I don't have yet. I would rate this device here. It's, it's kind of hard to compare to analog because it's so different. So the way that the analog tube works is basically magic. It runs on almost no battery power and it amplifies light so incredibly well with no delay whatsoever. It literally is like magic. Photons come in the front and then more photons come out the back, kind of magically. The way that this works is it's a digital camera. It just happens to be an extremely sensitive digital camera. So the good news is you have all the advantages of a digital camera. So you can record video and take pictures. Uh, you can even stream the video over Wi-Fi to a device of some sort. Um, you have a digital screen, so it overlays GPS and compass stuff on top of that. Uh, but the downsides of the digital device are it's only as good as digital sensors are right now, which is not quite as sensitive as the analog tubes. Um, and there's also some delay. That delay is a bigger issue if you're trying to run around really fast uh, underneath a helmet, which is like 99.9% .9 of your yeah. uh, night vision use. Um, so yeah, I would, I would say that the sensitivity of this device is roughly similar to a Gen 2 tube. And again, Gen 2 and Gen 3 tubes are kind of all over the map as far as resolution and clarity and blemishes and scintillations and life and, and actual sensitivity. Uh, this is very much comparable to a Gen 2 tube in my mind, but it is color and it's a camera that can record video. So it's a little better and more useful than a Gen 2 tube if you're actually going to use that stuff. If all you're going to yep. do is clip it onto a helmet and run fast, not so good. If you're going to use it as a monocular, quite affordable. And there's a version called the Sport, which loses the GPS but still has exactly the same camera features uh, that's much cheaper. There's a black version that I think comes with a rifle rail attachment, which I'm not super excited about. And then there's a pro version, which is going to be more expensive, but theoretically possibly as much as twice as sensitive, but the same resolution, yep. 720p. So. so one of the big benefits, and digital's obviously a little bit behind due to what's going on over here, is PVS 14s, you know, and some of these housings are quite durable. Um, oh, yeah. You can throw them on a helmet, you can take a dump, they're good to go. You can um, scuba dive in this. It's waterproof. You cannot do that in this. Yeah, so, and that's a big deal if you're actually running around and doing stuff is just because I might be able to put this on a helmet in front of my eye does not mean it's going to do well. It's like, it's, it's similar to if I go out and buy an NC Star $30 Airsoft red dot to put on this gun, will I see a red dot when I turn it on? Yes. Is that going to work very well when I start running around shooting? Will it maintain zero? Will it actually fall apart in recoil? And the answer is, yeah, it'll, it'll fail, it'll fall apart, and it'll die. Now, there is one area in which this is more tough than that, and that is you can easily burn out this tube by pointing it at too bright a light. Now, there's auto gating, yep. there's ways around that, but internally, this thing is sensitive to light. This thing is only going to burn out if you blast it with an actual laser right into uh, the sensor. <laughs> uh, Nicholas C. actually did that as a test oh, not too long yeah. ago, and uh, <laughs> thank you for your sacrifice. Didn't he also try to wear one of those on a helmet? I know, I think no, he's been doing that tried. for a while. Oh, I will say the firearm blog can be a little hit and miss as far as the it can. like. Sometimes they're just posting pictures, which is so lame. It's almost like, it's almost like, like Instagram like... or something. But they also have uh, some guys on there that really know what they're talking about. Nicholas C writes a lot about night vision. Yep. He had a post recently that went through what the different levels of omni classification are. Worth checking out if you are researching these. But yeah, he killed one of these uh, doing laser testing of a foreign laser device, and it was uh, it was super. Was that awesome. a purse? Was it a purse that he used? Uh, he was using one of those uh, mysterious and old laser rangefinders that have like, um, kilometer range. Oh yeah, just for totally lazing. That's fun. So yeah. people keep asking affordable night vision, affordable night vision. Like I said, you may have popped in later. Most affordable. 
good night vision you can get that will actually do what it needs to do and let you see and move around and run around and do stuff, in my opinion, is going to be a PBS 14 Gen 3 of some type. I would say don't even mess with Gen 2. Technically, Gen 2 tubes are a little more durable as far as like weapon mounting them and stuff like that than a Gen 3. But also, in my opinion, weapon mounting night vision has very limited application. Uh, it's much more important to me to be able to run around and move and see versus having to obviously hunt through my optic. Uh, the only time you really see guys uh, doing weapon mount night vision is they're in a hide sight, uh, they're doing precision stuff, they've got overwatch, they got a bolt gun, they have a gas gun, you know, they're in a sniper overwatch role where they're not moving around. And if they do start to move around, they've got headborne uh, nods they can use, and then they're not even running the gun like, you know, it's intended with the night vision clip on in the front. Uh, I have one of those, I don't have it here, it's in the other room, a PBS 24LR. Uh, which can clip to the front and get people out to, I think they say 1,500 meters, depending on scope, a 5 by 25 uh, 1,000 meters, something like that. It's a really cool uh, mm. night vision clip-on. They're about 12 grand, something like that. Um, and so if you want to go clip-on and you want to get, like, something decent for long range, you're, you're going to pay for it. Um, there's, like, the mm, old yeah. Starlight ones that are huge that aren't as good resolution. Uh, they're bigger, they're heavier, a little cheaper. You might be able to get one of those for, like, three or four grand. But in my opinion... Uh, you know, I'd say don't even worry about weapon mounted night vision. Try to put something on your head with a helmet, and then you can worry about your sighting systems for your actual weapon and shoot. And it's going to be more effective than having to look through the optic, find where the targets are, and doing whatever. It's yeah. much better to be able to turn with my head, keep my gun down here, and then whether I have a laser or a passive red dot, I can bring that up and then take my shots like so. So, with that said, Let's go. Let's kind of go over like a full night vision setup. Let's yeah. Well, well, let's actually step down a little bit because there is one level lower, which is a handheld monocular device. Sure. Not good for moving quickly. Yep. But there have actually been several times. I have something that's basically this size, which means it's way easier to carry than this whole dealio. And there have been several times when I wanted to walk quietly through the woods. Uh, do you remember my old house was very close to a location I, I where do certain that. people did I, some? Uh, yeah, indeed. Yes. yes. And uh, there was one night when some guys were doing some training out there, and I just walked up to them in the dark. And it was not night vision training. They were doing medical training. But I had this, and I walked up to them in the dark with it just fine. So they yep. did not know that I was there. They can do but handheld I could see stuff. Them. Um, and uh, now if you do handheld stuff, uh, it also works really well with red-dotted pistol, but not so well with red-dotted rifle. So yep. uh, So folks are asking, give me that green box. Folks are asking duels or mono. Now, obviously, as soon as you start getting into the duels game, you're looking at going from, you know, potentially $1,800, $1,600 for a PVS-14. You're looking all the way up to about, I want to say, minimum six grand uh, for a good bino setup. I know one way you can do it is you get two 14s and you get a bridge. The downside is when you're running two bridged 14s, if they're not collimated properly to each other, what can generally happen is you're going to get a lot of headaches. Like... A bino setup isn't just two tubes. Like, they're two tubes that are exactly the same. They're angled exactly the same. You don't have one that's, like, angled off or set back or whatever. They're calibrated They're perfectly. calibrated perfectly so you can run them for nights on end and not want to vomit. So taking two 14s and even a quality bridge like the Team DC one is something I really would not recommend. Um, now, if you're issued, if you're on a, a, a unit and you're issued, like a department, you're issued, you have extra 14s, and you want to turn some yeah. of them into a bino that you're going to wear for like an hour and then do something, sure, that's a little different. But if you actually want something you can wear all night, run around with, and you want to go to a bino, get a dedicated bino. And there are people in here saying binos are dumb because you'll get flashed with the light and then you're blind. No, this isn't Patriot Games where light comes on and you're blind. Ah. If you have brand new, like little reference right there? I, I think there? I can Patriot do you games. one better. Yeah. So I think I can actually reenact the scene. Yeah. Ah! Yeah, exactly. And then oh. you can be uh, Denzel Washington. Was it Denzel Washington? No, no it wasn't. Was, it was Harrison uh, Ford. No, it was, it was Samuel Jackson, actually, who smokes the guy. Never mind. So. And then Sean Bean totally dies him, totally because Sean him. Bean always spoilers, dies. Spoilers. So if you have a quality bino system with modern tubes, flashing lights, bright lights aren't going to blind view. Your nods can auto gate. You can still see just fine. Now, what I want to turn these PBS 31s on in here with all these lights right here? No, not necessarily. Would I still be able to see Chad working computer over there? Yes, I would. It wouldn't actually bloom as bad as people think like in movies. Um, I do some well, driving here and there with these. 
Um, when and if, hypothetically, I encounter a vehicle coming towards me, my lights are on, their lights are on, I'm not blind. I'm fine, they auto gate. I see some, you know, the little hexagons of the tube itself, which kind of indicate to me, whoa, it's a little bright. You know, you probably want to turn the gain down, and I'm fine. Like modern binos, you can flash lights in, you can run around with. If you run into a lit room that's somewhat lit, uh, you'll be okay. Now, do you want to leave your nods on in a, in a bright room for a prolonged period of time? No, you don't. But they're you not like, as fragile as people think. Yeah, they're not as fragile as people think, but they are fragile. If you buy expensive nods, you research how to not kill them because you really want to yeah. not kill what them. What you don't want to do, so my big thing is my caps are always on unless I'm in the process of using them. What I don't want to do is accidentally leave my front caps off, rear caps are off, and without me knowing it, these are on because I left the battery store inside, which you also don't want to do, and I'm aimed at this light. And if it's aimed at that light for a couple hours, you're going to have a nice big black blim where that light is most likely, and it's not going to heal on its own. So. What I do when I come back and I'm done with my nods is I pull them off my helmet, I cap them before I like go indoors if I can, I switch them off, uh, pull them off of my helmet, I then remove the battery, which I want to say my battery's out, battery's out, and all I do is I keep my battery stored in my little box, one of these lithiums. You also want to use lithiums, not alkaline. Um, my 31s will kill an alkaline battery in about an hour, and a lithium I want to say is about nine, eight mm -hmm. hours. Um, and then if I run a battery pack, I've got like four nights of battery, something like that. So it's What's pretty legit. What's in the battery pack, by the way? Lithiums, four lithiums. Okay. So the same thing, just boom, 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 they're done. I haven't seen this so, one. It's pretty sweet. But then, and this is also like some state-of-the-art bino night machine. But here's the cool thing. This, and then these obviously are only sold at LE Mill right now. It's really stupid, but. I would like to point out, it's not illegal to own them. No, you just, just they just don't to sell them off. directly. Unless yeah. you're like a dealer, you know someone, they fell off a truck, whatever. I will say this about binos though. You can go get a good set of DTNVGs with good tubes in them, have a good set of binos, a white phosphor, about as good as these, in some ways more durable, for like eight to nine grand. Um, and you're in the oh, game it's a and steal. you got binos. It's a steal, it really is. Um, <laughs> now I will say, because people are so like, you know, monocular's better because one of your eyes is unobscured and you can see when there's a white light or I can bring my gun up and find my red dot. Those are true, those are true. Um, but when I was down working with some folks, they said, Yes, the 14 it has its uses, but everybody running the binos beats everyone running a monocular on the obstacle course. They can navigate, move mm -hmm. faster. Yeah. The whole depth perception thing, it is a thing, although with training, you can get over the whole depth perception thing you with a single, like it, you can get over a lot of it. And you basically need to train your brain to not yes. be confused when your two eyes are seeing two different things, which is, I saw a bunch of people asking, what about night vision on one eye and thermal on the other? Your brain is not wired to figure that out. So it's going to slow you down. And the same is true with running a monotube. Your brain is not used to that. And depending on how much neuroplasticity you got going on, you can learn to handle that better. But uh, yep. your brain works better when both eyes are seeing roughly the same thing and it can fill in the gaps. Yep. There's, there's some, I've heard stories of dudes, some of the guys who had quads early on having some issues, nausea, all that good stuff. Um, from having all the extra tubes and what's going on with that. I've run quads. I didn't run them long enough to notice that. I ran them for like half an hour. Um, and I'm hoping to get some more time on those here in the future. And I know everyone's saying, those are the best thing ever. Um, a lot of those people are people who've never even looked through them, never used them for a prolonged period of time. Uh, some of the guys that I've talked to and some of the people that I've worked with who are issued quads and they're issued 31s um, will go and run 31s instead because of the weight. Uh, quads do weigh a lot, even the new ones. Uh, yeah. They have changed in, in their, their models and some of their production. Uh, they actually just updated recently where the mount interface is tougher. Uh, the new, uh, they have a new uh, SKU as well. Uh, so they updated them pretty recently for that as well. But you're adding a lot of weight. Yes, you're getting some like extra you know, perception. You're getting a little bit more off to the sides, but that's coming at the cost of added weight. So there's pros and cons to that. I will say though, if I have the option of running a, a, a monocular or a bino, I'm taking the bino every day if it's a good bino. And if it's a bino that's articulating like a DTNVG or a 31, and I want to go to a monocular, I can do that. If I really want need to see like, is this a white light in the distance that I can see with my nods on? Yeah. No. No, it's not. It's IR. So someone else out here has night vision. Um, and that's really cool. Yes. Counterpoint. I love counterpoints. Okay, I, I agree with you 100%. Like if, if I have the choice of running yes. mono or bino, I would pick the bino every time. Yes. However, Smart. if I am paying for mono or bino, it's and a harder decision. And sure. 
The other thing is binos only work with a helmet. Mono, there's a lot of ways you can use a mono uh, setup. So you really got to think through these things. There is really no one size fits all. Yeah. If you know that you're going to be using these in a scenario where you are able to use your whole helmet, this is awesome. But now you have to carry all this stuff with you so you have it. Some people were asking earlier, what is it even for? Um, we were kind of talking, now here's another idea. So we're, we've been talking about how much this costs, which is a lot of money for one person. What do you think about the idea of a small squad of guys invests in enough night vision that they can share it, they can all take turns training with it? Because mm -hmm. let's imagine like end of the world, zombie apocalypse, economic collapse. Government uh, doesn't exist, US dollar doesn't exist, all that good stuff. So Joe Biden being elected, basically. Sure, basically, right. yeah. So, in that scenario, we're not actually doing raids and offensive activities all the time. What we're doing is mostly hunkering down at my house, and the only people that really need nods are the guys doing night watch and perimeter check stuff. Patrol stuff, checking on the animals. Ideally, if we get attacked at night, we want everybody to have nods. Ideally, in a perfect world, everybody has all the best gear. But there's ways in which you don't need every single person in your group yeah. to have the greatest, biggest, tallest capacity. So the other way to think about this is not what you personally are going to be doing, but kind of like, what does your group actually need? They may not all need yeah. the same stuff. What's well, actually, this kind of brings me to this uh, technology, which is pretty cool. So uh, obviously there's there's a lot of different training out there in SOPs for uh, our own, our guys, uh, when, they're, when they're working with a host nation where our guys have nods, host nation doesn't. And this has obviously happened for decades where there is a force that has superior technology than the other, and they may be working with them, so they have to figure out ways you know, of how to work with them. So mm -hmm. obviously one thing, you've got guys who have nods who are essentially observers who can direct where things are. Um, so something that's actually really cool with the uh, new NGAL that L3 makes is they have all the IR settings on this switch right here, and their pressure pad, this is their like I want to say, you couldn't do this with the Pack 15 due to how the switches and the everything was how it worked. But this rear button in the back of this pressure pad is actually a manual override to the vis laser on board. So what this would essentially allow me to do is, if I've got nods and I got three dudes who don't, and I'm seeing people, I can laze them obviously with my IR laser and my illuminator to kind of check them out and do whatever. And then at any moment I can pop my vis laser, which all of them can see and go. They're in that building. They just went in this, you know, structure. Uh, they're over in this area, and then all my guys who don't have nods can be like, "There's the red laser," and this is a stupid bright red laser, uh, which could also potentially give me away. Um, but there's stuff like that where you can move your laser over from IR to Viz to designate to people that don't have nods uh, or run tracer ammunition, for example. There's a lot of different things that people have done over the years for working with people that don't have night vision, and that's something I've yeah. thought about because, like, not all my buddies own nods. I do. So if we were doing a thing in a few years or whatever where they still don't have nods and things are weird and there's like corona times 10 and weird stuff's happening. The corona zombies. I, I'd have my nods for observing, but then I'd probably ha have to go nods up and go to white light if all of them are going white light after something occurs. And that obviously happens a lot with dudes as well as they use night vision to infill to the objective or to the area that they're going to, and then they swap to white light as soon as things kick off. Because yeah. uh, white light does allow you to see more. I have full depth perception. I can track lighting, you know, lighting the conditions in rooms work. better. Yeah. Um, like I shoot better with just a white light on the range than nods with a laser. Now nods with a laser is really easy to shoot with, contrary to what a lot of instructors and classes want to make you think. Like shooting with night vision and laser is actually super easy. It's moving us the hard part. But running a white light, throwing nods up and going white light, and having something effective like this mod light and a pressure pad that's in a very easy ac uh, to access position um, is way easier to shoot with. You can see more um, than you know, having your night vision on. So there are benefits to obviously going full white light, going full nods. Um, I'm not here to give a bunch of tactics and SOPs for you oh, guys. No, you're that's not. For no, I'm not allowed yeah. to, I'm a civilian. Yeah. Um, you guys can figure that out. But you can take this technology and be like, I got nods, they don't. So I may have to adjust per yeah. what they're doing if things kick off. Or maybe all of you have nods, and then it's beneficial to not go white light at all as long as you can help it. Um, so there's a lot of things to think about as far as that goes. Let's talk it's active versus, versus passive, because oh, uh, yes, yes. you just posted a video oh, yeah, on uh, pistol lasers Some of you guys may have watched pistol it, actually. lights. They should have, because they have time. in the chat if you did. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, uh, you were also doing a bunch of tests with optics. Passive, no laser, yep. looking through the optics with the tubes, 
What did you find? So, because I already know, uh, so there's a couple, done this myself. So there's a couple kind of theories <laughs> out there. So obviously, IR lasers are great because you have a permanent beam, depending on lighting conditions, from you to wherever you're aiming. So it's really easy for buddies and other folks to track where the, where you're aiming, what you're doing. Um, you can shoot the gun from any position, from the hip, around things. Um, you can greedo people under tables. Uh, lasers are pretty cool for certain stuff, especially under nods. Um, the downside to running a laser is anyone else who has night vision can potentially yep. see your laser and your IR illuminator as it busts through searching for them. So what some guys have had to do uh, more recently because more people are getting night vision is revert to tactics, training, SOPs, whatever, where they're actually not running their lasers, they're relying on their passive dots or they're having to move around without illumination at all and then they're having to um, basically run these and just rely off of the moon because they can't just shine their illuminators all over the place because other people have night vision. Even cheapo like CCTV cameras, like cheapo security cameras will see IR light. Um, like our cameras here, they're all powered off of like IR lights. They could see IR lights. So someone could have a cheapo little light at their front door and yeah. if a bunch of dudes are rolling in with IR lasers, that's they, they, they're lit up like a Christmas tree. The, all those lights are just going to pour in. And, and if someone's is... sitting there watching the camera, they'll, they'll see that you're coming. If you're yeah. just flashing all your lights out there and illuminators and just And this is something that has changed U.S. military doctrine a lot in uh, the past few years. Because previously, we, being the Americans, always assumed that we had superior capability. We owned the night. And I IR was used pretty much just without any discretion. But... Over time, people have realized that even just really basic, cheap video cameras can be modified to see IR, or the really cheap ones yeah. already see IR. Uh, my phone sees a surprising amount of IR for the quality of the camera, uh, more than it should for photographic purposes. And that changes, uh, that changes things considerably. So people are moving away from lasers, and I'm at the point now where I'm... I don't think I'm actually going to run a laser on my uh, on my main carbine because you'll want by the time I think yeah. I actually bring it into play, it'll either be a home invasion scenario where I'm using white light, or just yeah. you know, no in my house trying and to step up the ghost. On. Don't have time to put nods like, on. I don't, or, like, and that I'll come out that real quick. People <laughs> think I have night vision for home defense. I don't think anyone, <laughs> unless you're in a mansion where you could hunt quail in the hallways. You're not going to have time to put on night vision in a home invasion situation, especially if you're just waking up out of bed like this. I'm not a morning person. It takes me hours to fully wake up. Now, That's definitely not going to happen late at night. You can sleep with this on, though. Right? You could, sure, but I don't have this for home invasion. I have this for much worse things than a home invasion, in my opinion. Um, and guys are like, I got my night vision on my nightstand. I'm going to put it on and everything. Like, no, that's probably not going to happen. You're going to stumble out of bed, probably trip on your like clothes on the floor, get your pistol, and that's all you're going to have. And hopefully you'll have a white light on your pistol so you can actually identify the threat or threats entering your house uh, because you're not going to have time to hand on your nods. Yeah. Now, the perfect scenario for having night vision from defense would be, uh, I actually talked to Drew about this, you would have a kill switch for the entire house that would also activate all the motion sensors in your house with IR lights. And so your IR you would... lights would turn on wherever the bad guys are in your house. So then you can come out of your massive mansion and you can see lights turning on over here, which are IR, which give you an advantage, and then you know, ah, they're over in the kitchen area. And then you can roll down with your quad, like stitched together night vision that goes all the way back to like here. It's got eight tubes and you look like mm, Rito. Yeah. And it'll be great. Just roll in and you got it going. And then you can play music to mask your sound because you know where they are because you have night vision. Uh, mini guns can pop out. Like that's the perfect scenario for, you know, home defense with it night is, vision. It is the most realistic um, one I've heard so far. But for it's probably not actually going to happen. And no, that's not how <laughs> I have my night vision set up in my house or anything like that. No. It's not going to happen. But, so, uh, so what I'm thinking of doing is um, not laser, but just make sure that I'm really up to speed with my passive stuff and just plan on, on uh, sticking with passive stuff. Because lasers are expensive. Yeah, so actually, let's cover that real quick. That, so, uh, something we so yeah, so passive aiming. So obviously, if you are running, this is another thing, though. Passive aiming is basically the concept where instead of running an IR laser for my sighting, I'm actually going to look through my standard optic, which is hopefully night vision compatible, which means it can get dim enough that it's not going to be you know, blown out with my night vision. And I have something like an EOTech that's night vision compatible, an aim point, or some other optic, provided it can get dim. It has to get dim. Otherwise, you're going to look through it, and it's going to be super bright, and it's going to be blooming, and you're not going to be able to see very well. But the kind of the crux of the issue with passive aiming, where you're relying on your optic, is you really got to have binos. The reason for that is 
Yeah. If I'm wearing my single tube on my left eye and I'm right-handed and I'm like this, you can't really get your left eye into this optic that's on your right shoulder. And if you use the other eye, you never know if these are completely and totally lined up. That too. Unless it's bright enough that you kind of don't need right. that anymore. The other issue is when you go to start, let's say I, ha I decided to shoot on my support shoulder for some dumb reason while I'm running nods and trying to look through a red dot. If I'm trying to now look through this, this site like this, I don't have a whole lot of, because I already, I already have, already only have 40 degrees through this, and I'm eating most of that trying to look through this tiny optic uh, on my gun. Yeah. The nice thing with binos is I'm left eye dominant already. So when I come down to get on my sight, I've got my right eye is picking up the dot in my right tube, and my left eye can see the entire target. That's what makes like both eyes open, shooting so awesome. One eye is slightly obscured because the sights are, that's what's going on over there, but my left eye can see the entire target, what's around the target, and what's beyond it, and all that good stuff. So for passive aiming being like a viable thing for shooting fast, shooting on the move, you know, all that good stuff, you really have to have binos for that. Uh, what I recommend to people if you're doing uh, monocular life is uh, you run a laser and you just get really good at your momentary use of that laser where you're, you have a, an appropriate switch of some sort where I can hit it when I need to shoot, I can release it when I'm not, um, or if I just need to scan an area with the illuminator and the laser because there's not enough light in that particular area. Um, but if you're just rocking this, I would say get a laser and don't worry about passive aiming. That really doesn't become, it really doesn't give you a lot of benefit unless you have binos. Um, it's just, it's really hard to shoot with a single tube and through a red dot. You know what I'm going to try though? You know what I'm going to try? I'm going to try a super <laughs> janky thing. I'm going to take one of the T-Rex offset mounts and put it on the other side. And I'm going to lean it over into my monocular. It'll See work. What happens. It's not going to be great. <laughs> and in weird positions, it's going to be really bad. Oh, exactly. Um, but I've, I've set, our offset's pretty cool. Um, you can <laughs> run, uh, I love running offset dots with my binos, um, provided it's like one of ours that gets higher um, and it's angled appropriately. Um, that works really well. And then shooting on the move and doing stuff is great. I will say yeah. though, if you are going with a passive solution, you still need to have an IR illuminator on your gun to some extent of somehow. Mm -hmm. um, the reason for that is since night vision amplifies available light, kind of like a camera, if I walk into a perfectly pitch black room, right. My night vision's useless. I'll just see the little like the little uh, uh, the little the, fireflies. The little fireflies in it. They're trying to do their work, but they can't because you have magic fireflies inside your night vision. And we should um, point out, Tennessee is actually like the worst place to use night vision because so yeah. much of the area is uh, forested. That um, there's a lot of shade. There's the a moon, lot of darkness. So it's kind of lame. But yeah. at the same time, that's good for you, the night vision user, because that makes it even harder for people that don't have yeah. nods to find you. But with that said. If I'm in a dark environment or there's no moon or it's completely overcast, um, that's when you need your IR illuminator to be able to actually basically flashlight an area or a place and see, is there someone there? Is there stuff there? Am I gonna fall in a hole? Like I flash my laser, my illuminator, more for seeing things more than shooting. Um, if I'm out walking around just doing whatever, I'm on like a little night hike, whatever, um, I'm flashing my laser not to shoot stuff, but to see, yeah. like in the tree line, around stuff, where it's dark, because if I've got the moon over here and there's trees here, there's gonna be shade over here that might be really hard to see into, because there is moon shade. Is that a word, moon shade? Well, I it mean, shade, it's, basically. yeah, trees are everywhere in Tennessee, so yeah. it's kind of why we don't do long range. It's why radio is so hard to do, and it makes night vision tricky. If you lived in some place like Arizona where there was a lot of moon, or actually if you were in a suburb that had a lot of street lights, maybe Gen 2 makes more sense for you. But then again, in a disaster scenario where the power's out, you don't have those street lights. So, All right, let's go ahead and uh, dive into some questions super fast, if you guys have some, and then we'll as those will come up, we'll get into the weeds on some things. Some guys were asking about ITAR. Oh, so yeah, here's the that. deal with non-American citizens having these things. You basically can. Mm -hmm. um, certainly not Gen 3 tubes. There's a lot of rules about that, which is actually one of the reasons the digital night vision is so cool. There's no restrictions on digital night vision because the restrictions are specifically on the technology that's inside the analog image intensifier tube that is right there. So uh, I would never travel uh, with <coughs> night vision, but this is just a camcorder, and so... Um, I have traveled with that. Yep. I'll talk about training. All right. So I have a lot of beefs with a lot of the training world and it's led to some people not liking me, but that's fine. It is what it is. Uh, one of my beefs with the night vision training world, because I've gone out and done some stuff with um, a few different companies, a couple different companies, and then just talked to a bunch of different folks is 
The majority of the night vision classes right now that are being offered to civilians are what I consider a normal day shooting class. You're just wearing night vision on your head. Uh, so you'll get your four hours of classroom of this is night vision, this is a mount, this is how you put it on, this is your laser. When you press the button, a laser turns on. And they may get really nerdy on some of that stuff. Uh, and then you go to the range, you stand still, and you do up drills with a laser for hours. And you may do a little thing at like 50, and you run up to 25, and you, that's all you do. And it's literally a standard, like normal day shooting class, you know, carbine one, you know, pistol one and you're just wearing night vision. The, down, the reason this is a problem, in my opinion, if you're going trying to go to a specialized night vision class is shooting a rifle with night vision, especially with a laser, is extremely easy. I have my night vision, I have my target, I bring the gun up, I hit my laser, and I shoot. Like, it's quite simple. The hard part with night vision is knowing when and how to focus it and at what distance, mm -hmm. and then moving. Yeah. Moving is where the real tricky part becomes with night vision and reading line conditions as well and some of the tactical stuff. But what I'd love to see is more night vision classes that focus on getting people to move and getting people to see. So more target identifi uh, identification drills, um, even drills where you're having to read stuff. So you get up close, you have to focus your nods close, read a thing, focus back out far, figure out which target you're going to shoot. So maybe you focus in on a math problem, which will then give you what target to look for downrange. Yeah, then I focus nice. long, go to shoot that target. Like those are the kinds of drills that will actually make people more uh, confident and competent with their night vision and being able to run around. Uh, one drill I really like to do with guys because I've had some of the contract stuff that I do, they ask for night vision uh, stuff at the end or during whatever, is we do a lot of movement drills, a lot of spatial awareness. Um, so I had this one drill where I had a, a line of cars, kind of like an interstate. And I had my guys literally just snaking through them shooting. And the big thing is, you know, watching the guys and getting them to not look at the ground. Like, you're keeping your head upright. I should be able to look to where the car is, look back to where the target is, and I've memorized the 10, 20 feet in front of me, and I can move around that car yeah. based on my knowledge of how big a car is, how far it is, and I can keep my head up. Because the last thing I want to do is I've got – you know, 40 degrees, even with binos. It's really narrow. I want to keep my 40 degree little circle up in this area where people are and not, oh, there's a rock down there. Like, I need to be memorizing that ahead of time. So one of the best things people can do with night vision, and I did this a lot early on when I first got my PBS 14, is just walking through the woods. Yep. You learn real quick to start memorizing 20 feet in front of you and maintaining, I'm looking out here and I'm stepping over stuff without even realizing it. Like, that's... Probably the biggest thing with night vision is moving around without tripping and falling, and then the processing information, seeing stuff, because the shooting is super, super easy with night vision. Um, super easy. I'll also say, uh, the other thing with night vision is, if you're running lasers and stuff, you have a lot of complicated uh, stuff going on with that. You gotta learn some stuff. You gotta with, learn some yeah. different things, because with a red dot, you have a dot, and you have your brightness. That's it, two variables. You get behind it, you shoot. With a laser, you've got you know, if it's a full power, you've got your low laser, uh, low laser illuminator, your high laser, your high laser illuminator, uh, you know, high laser and high illuminator. And depending on your lighting conditions or your range or what you're doing, you're going to want to be toggling between those and not just running one all the time. Now, if you have a civilian class laser, a C class laser, um, I would recommend just most likely for probably everything, just running uh, the illuminator and the laser at the same time. Why in your illuminator? So it's like a flashlight. You have the laser, which you can zero to the center of that uh, pattern, and then you'll just work it like that. Um, but you know, your laser unit is something you have to learn as well. I had a unit that came out. It was actually kind of funny. Um, there's some cool dudes, and I had them get on a target, and they all had varying uh, focusing on their LA5s. On their uh, yeah, they had LA5s, impact 15s, that a mix. They had a varied focus as far as their beam went for their illuminator. Some of them were on high, some of them were on low, some of them were on laser only. Did they know how to change it? So I then called out uh, high laser only, and most of the guys didn't even know how to like yeah. go to that. So There's we a stopped. lot of switches there. There's a lot of switches going on with the PEC-15. So we stopped, we went to the line, we cleared out our guns, and I had them do a dry fire drill for about half an uh, it was about 20 minutes where I would call out low laser, low laser illuminator, high illuminator, high laser, high illuminator, and they had to start from the off position and rotate that knob to that setting and then hit that button and see if they were correct. Uh, yeah. So we did that for, and then I had them mess with their, their focusers as well. 
Um, there is a lot more going on with the laser unit itself, and mm -hmm. then you have stuff with your night vision, your diopter, and your focus. Um, but after that, once you have that figured out, it's all movement, processing yeah. information, seeing stuff, um, you know, identifying you know, problems that you can be given by your instructor, and I'm not seeing a lot of classes that are doing that. They're just focusing on, put your helmet on, 10 yards, five rounds, stand by, boop, and that's, yeah. that's easy. Anyone can do that. You don't have to go to a class, in my opinion, mm -hmm. to just do that. So that's my little rant about training. And that's some yeah. information for you guys to do. Uh, even things as simple as battery change outs uh, with your night vision while you're wearing it. Um, field stripping your gun, putting it together up close, out of focus. Uh, stuff like that can be good. Stuff that makes you comfortable and confident while you're wearing night vision. Because a lot of folks, this is kind of the big issue, right? I put these on. And most people, if they haven't been in their nods a lot, they feel impaired by only having this much degrees of view. Uh, when in reality, I should feel empowered because now I can actually see at night. Even mm -hmm. though it's like this, I put these on and I'm like, oh, I got this. And so that's kind of getting students from, man, this really sucks, I only have 40 degrees, to, yeah. oh my goodness, this is amazing, let's go, I'm gonna run a sprint and slay all these targets even though I only have 40 degrees. And a lot of that's, that's kind of what it comes training. down to. Obviously, there's some things that you can practice at home and you should be practicing at home uh, before you actually spend the time training so you can use that time really wisely. But uh, yeah, be familiar with any of the equipment that you get. And if you're paying yep. for it yourself, really get familiar with it before you buy it so you're sure that it's what you should get. Thermal. Um, so uh, yeah, real fast on thermal. Um, thermal overlays are really cool in conjunction with night vision. Uh, wearing thermal on its own, head mounted, is not great. It's not a thing. Your um, brain does not know how to interpret heat. Very well. Yeah, the cold ground is going to be basically the same. Color. You're going to like fall. You're going to be like, where's the ground? Ah. Yeah, your brain knows great. how to see visible light, not not heat. Thermal, but for target identification, yeah, it can thermal be super overlays helpful. and fusion units are great. Downside is a thermal overlaid fusion like PBS thirty one setup is like thirty grand. I want to say, um, you can get clip ons like the Cody, the E Cody. Uh, you probably can't get an E Cody yet. Uh, the Cody you can. It's yeah. um, I want they're they're like four or five grand, and they clip on down here, and it gives you a thermal overlay on one goggle. Uh, those are super cool. They give you a predator view around someone. The bu That's they got a great. bunch of settings that are very handy. Yeah, yeah, full color, like all sorts of stuff. But uh, running thermal, dudes obviously do them for long range. So they're in a fixed position, uh, shooting distance where they can like identify stuff. Hunters use them. But again, hunters aren't always shooting on the move and running around doing stuff. Yeah. They may be in a hide site or they're in a truck, so it's a little bit different. Um, thermal, I don't believe is, uh, there's a reason our dudes don't run around with thermal only on their head. Um, if they have thermal, they have overlays. Yeah. And I've talked to some guys who like them, some guys that don't, because it's busy, it's not busy. I've talked to guys who've been saved by it. They've literally almost walked into a dude in the grass who had an AK, and they shot him right from there because they had a fusion goggle. Um, and I've talked to guys that said they didn't like it because it's too much stuff going on, and it's heavier and battery life and all that good stuff. Um, but thermal, I wouldn't look into thermal at all unless you're, it's for long range or it's an SPR type gun. Uh, or you're hunting pigs from a static position, you're not running around doing stuff, I really wouldn't recommend thermal. I do have uh, thermal optic and on the way. Uh, Trichicon is sending me to mess with, they sent me one of the big ones a while back and I hmm. sent it back. Uh, they're sending me their small 35 millimeter thermal uh, scope and I'm actually gonna put an armor on top because it has a little pigatinny section. So I'm gonna try to run, in, I'm gonna try to run and gun with that a little bit, but. That, I don't know. That's kind we'll of see. interesting. I wanna pop smoke grenades and shoot through it, but it doesn't work that way. Why doesn't it work that way? It's the the thermal doesn't actually penetrate smoke. It's oh, too hot. Oh, you mean the, the video the hot. video games are not? not I had real? a plan. See, the thing oh. is, I had a plan for a video I really wanted to do where we were just chucking smokes and then shooting through them. But oh, real yeah. life different than game. Now, one of the things that we could do is uh, the cooler <sighs> fog from our fog machines uh, is less dense, and the temperature differential. Well, actually, it's getting warm enough. We can the fake the video, but I don't want to do that. Temperature differential is actually getting up there now. <sighs> Uh, best way to sign laser under nods. Uh, we have a video on Trex Arms uh, on that on the PEC 15 page at PLC page. You can check that out. Uh, yeah. There's a parallel zero. That's uh, good to yeah. go. Someone here was asking, why don't you just zero it so that the dot and the bullet always coincide wherever you shoot? On, on what setup? Passive? So the laser dot always goes where the bullet is going to hit all the yeah. time, always. Uh, I wish that were a thing. Uh, so it's a good question. Why, it is. Um, so your laser, <laughs> as you can see, just to get over this, sits over here. My barrel's over here. So if I make the laser 
go to this point right here, that means as soon as I get further away, well, now I'm, I'm off. So what you do for what you're asking about is you keep the laser perfectly next to the barrel. Uh, it's called a parallel zero. So that way the only thing that's going to uh, have an effect is your uh, elevation. So you start to shoot at 500 meters or something crazy, which is probably not gonna happen with nods or civilian class laser. Um, civilian class laser under decent lighting conditions, so like a medium moon, not full moon, not no moon, uh, you got about 100 meters-ish of engagement distance. If there's a full moon, you lose a lot of that because there's just a lot more light yeah. that just kind of eats up your beam and your illuminator. Uh, no moon, you can actually shoot your apiole see pretty good because um, obviously there's nothing going on. But uh, you want to parallel zero if you're running a laser. And that's part of the reason why a passive optic is pretty awesome because my normal 5200, 100, 36, whatever it is that you do, zero, is your true 3600, 5200, zero if I actually go to shoot at distance with nods. Which, and you can zero during the day. And you can zero it during the day, run it during the day. It does require you have binos, at least in my opinion, pretty much. Um, so that's kind of how zeroing works. But you can look on the Zero Service website and you can yeah. uh, get more information on that. All right, we're coming up on the end here. No, uh, no, we're not. No, we're not. All well, right, question. I guess we can keep Unless going. you have something. Oh, LPV on or night vision. Uh, not possible. <laughs> Impossible. Impossibly. Whatever. You can't, you're not going to see it. The reason for that is I know people love talking about high mounts for that reason. Um, this is an absolute scalar works mount, but what's going on is there's so much glass right here and light loss. Uh, yeah. through also my night vision that once I bring this up and I have my illuminated center dot, it, you can't really see the target to begin with, uh, especially if you only have a single tube, like a 14. Um, it's just not going to happen. So you know uh, what I I've never do, had though. success running, and I've shot four or five different LPVOs under head-mounted nods. I've never had any success shooting past like 10 yards, 15 yards uh, with an LPVO on the lowest uh, illumination on one power. Um, it's not as much of an option as people say. Uh, red dots are still king for that, and the EOTech's probably the best. I kind of want to put them on a bench, like line them up perfectly and actually see what it's like. We could do that. Because obviously the hardest too. part is getting the eye box right with the two yes. different tubes. Yes, but and getting on it. And I, I really am curious. There's now. a lot of light yeah. loss. It's pretty incredible. And even I've, and I've got good tubes, too. I've got 31s, you know, white. And these are SOCOM tubes. These aren't like the law enforcement ones that they pull off the line. Like these are the SOCOM ones. And yeah, it's still not great. Um, Can you please put the video, the music you use in the video description? Um, no, we buy it. It's so stock, no. It's stock music. It's not from bands. It's not stock. We go and buy it. It's from stock music places. Ish. But yeah, we, uh, we have to pay money. Like sometimes hundreds, of, hundreds of dollars. Yeah. So much money for that. Uh, Scalar works 193 high enough. Yes, it is. Actually, fun fact, uh, with a set of binos, you can get behind a EOTech EXPS3. You can get behind a lower third optic. It, all, it just requires that your stock be up a little more. Uh, but I run my guns with standard, uh, like that Mark 18 back there, that CKBR. Uh, I run you know, binos with that just fine. Uh, obviously, going higher helps. This is the Unity Fast Riser. It's a 2.23 inch height, something like that. Um, you have the 193 which I can actually put up front here, a little shorter. It's my preferred uh, preferred mount by ScalarWorks. It's a little bit lower, but again, you can still get on it just fine um, to see your night vision if you're running passive. So those are both good to go. Or if you want to be really OG, you can get uh, that carry handle AR back there with a T1 on top, T2, and you're at like 2.4. Perfect like for night vision. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, there was actually a fair amount of night vision use back in NOM, so. Yeah, That's kind of interesting. and also dudes running around trenches uh, in the tunnels with like a mag light taped to their Colt Python. Well, a lot of times but... they had a miner's helmet and they had a little oh. switch in their mouth that would turn it on because oh. the batteries were so big and heavy and lasted for so short amount of time. Colt Python, little mouth switch, bite it on, light comes on, shoot. I should do that in a video. We could put a, neat. we would need a, well, I've got old lights we can use that aren't, because, <laughs> well, because the issue I'm seeing is the lights up here. So as soon as you present the gun, the light's all in your hands and it. Yeah. And you can't see anything. I'd have to shoot from like here. <laughs> I mean, that's let's, how you shoot a, a Colt Python a, anyway. It's true. Let's go get a Colt Python. That'd be great. Uh, best cost, night vision uh, device. Uh, again, PVS 14, if you can afford it, binos. Um, the 14s are X300 uh, V worth the money. Yes. I think having an X300 Vampire in your arsenal as an option is really good because it does give you that IR illumination, which can flood an area and let you see. Um, I love mine a lot. They're great. Uh, we have them at T Rex and they're like, 320, I think. They're a little more expensive than a standard X300. Now, you also played with the Streamlight that has the laser. Yes. I forget what that one's called.
The VIR, VIR2. Um, yeah. Yes, so the video we just posted today, you can go watch that. I show that, and that has a onboard um, white light that's like 600 lumens, which is actually more than the X300 Vampire. Uh, and then it has an IR illuminator with an IR uh, laser as well. And that is about 380 bucks, I want to say, something like that. I was, was surprised. Really I, was, I was surprised yeah, that you was liked nice. it so much, but it is very affordable and it works in it was pretty, pretty the rad. TLR1 Ragnarok. I don't have it here. I do have the suppressed Glock 17 with uh, the new Surefire XBL2, which is really cool. The only downside, I didn't really mention it in the videos, but the switches on this are not. Well, there's another downside. They're not amazing. It, it costs about it's as much as. It's $1,300, yeah, but, yeah. you know, cost gonna... aside, money aside. <laughs> uh, the issue with this laser is the switches are pretty hard to hit. Uh, so I'm actually looking forward to them making a DG switch that mm -hmm. I can activate with my uh, middle finger right here, and I'll be good to go. But um, this guy's pretty fun. So it's a surefire can. Um, have you tried out PVS 21s? Uh, no. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that is just... I think that Lucas does a pretty good job of trying, trying out most of the general like yeah. categories of stuff, but there are so, so many, many individual things that are kind of hard to, to get because the military use them for this yeah. or for that. Yeah. Or, and the other thing is I get my hand, I get to try a lot of stuff, but to me, that's not use unless it's mine and I can use it for a couple months. Mm -hmm. Like I shoot guns, people hand me guns like, oh, I shoot this gun and I shoot, you know, two mags. And people ask me, have you shot that gun? And I'm like, kind of, not really. Uh, Cause I don't really count it as running the gun until I can actually have it, you know, on my belt with my mags. I can actually run a gun with it, do my drills with it, actually run it for more than two mags and actually get some experience on it. Um, and same goes for night vision. If a dude's like, oh, try out these nods and I put them on, I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Like that's not really using it in my opinion. That's kind of tasting it, but it's not really actually, you know, eating it. So. Um, yeah, we got a lot of ITAR questions. Um, um, yeah, I think we have more foreign people on YouTube we, than Instagram. We do. Now this is interesting. I really don't know a lot about the, the Russian nods, but we should probably Russian nods. I've thought about trying to get some stuff. I've got the purse lasers. Um, but, uh, the, and those are me. So, so, the tubes are probably, so I had a guy contact me, uh, a long time ago. From Russia. <laughs> No, he was an American, but he was doing a thing in a place that was not America. And he fun. would have been able to get the paperwork to do the Gen 3 thing. But he was putting together a group of people who were foreign nationals who were not allowed to look through Gen 3 tubes, so he needed an alternative. Oh. And, uh, so he actually was able to use this. And then because it was an observation type thing and not a combat type thing, um, he got away with it. Well, that and the Sony A7S with the IR modification, oh, yeah. which is, I would say, just a hair below Gen 3, but 4K in color. And then this is close to Gen 2, but 720p in color, so. Uh, what do tritium sites look like through nods? Uh, not great. And if you are backlit with a light, uh, they're gone, because there's too much light on the gun and they wash away. Uh, the only time you can really see tritium is if you're in a place that's completely dark, um, then you might be okay. Fix that mic, Isaac's mic. Just kidding. My mic? Yeah. All right cable issue um yeah tritiums don't like them um don't, really don't check your mics my mic's fine should be uh you can't really warranty because they're not supposed to be for civilians are pbs 15s no 15s you can buy uh you can warranty but again it all depends where you buy them from usually you buy them from a company and that company is responsible for the warranty generally so another thing about buying nods from reputable people uh tmbc is a good place to buy from um there's another place, Heat, uh, high-end armament technology, armament and technology. Uh, they're pretty good, too. Um, so there's those two places that I know of. So your mic, yeah. I'll just try this. Night Vision for Barrett M107. Uh, don't know. I don't think I'm ever going to put a clip-on on our Barrett. Um, it would be one of those big clip-ons of some sort. I mean, I could do headborne and put a laser on it, uh, maybe. I I'd, I'd put a Russian laser on I think on you there. need to put a giant clip on and the a cannon. A massive one. Because it's just too light. Yeah, boost that weight. Um, it's not fine. Check it. Everyone's like, audio. Thoughts on the Glock 45 versus 19? They're both the same. They both shoot 9mm and they're both Glocks. Um, I'd say get the Glock 45 if you're left-handed. Uh, Glock 19 if uh, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, my lead levels. Thank you for asking. I actually came down five points. Uh, I was really happy about that. I'm shooting suppressed less, and um, I haven't been wearing my mask as much, but yeah, lead levels, they are a thing. I went from 19-ish to 14. 
So that's good. And the average is like two or three for people, adults, normal people. Now, there's no such thing as Gen 4 night vision. That we know. Uh, well, so there's a classification <laughs> for it, but there is no actual yeah. physical such thing as Gen 4 night vision. So if you see people selling you Gen 4 night vision, it's a marketing thing. Now, there is such a thing as Gen 2 plus night vision, but that's complicated and you want to do your research before you buy it. Oh, two dots is the way. Redundancy. I totally forgot I had two Backups. dots on here, actually. Um, yeah, David said recoil can kill st stuffs. Yes, it can. Absolutely. Uh, irons in front or behind. Uh, I, I, it's fine. You get either. Uh, if you're behind, you can put an SRO on. If they're in front, you can't. So it depends. Um, Luke, uh, T-Rex, you think the L3 is outdated or now moving to XVL2? Uh, no. Uh, well, mm, don't know. I actually haven't run the XVL2 on a rifle yet, but I wouldn't run it until they make good switches. Uh, until they release good switches for that, I wouldn't run it. Um, the app peel is, will also sit a little bit more ergonomically on the rail. Um, I should weigh the two. They may actually weigh about the same. Uh, this is a metal body laser. Uh, the app peel is a glass reinforced polymer. Um, and it feels a little bit lighter, so I don't know. That's a good question. They're about the same price, um, but I'll have, to, I'll have to check it out. But I'm waiting on switches. If you've got to have good switches if you're going to do stuff. Mm. Yeah. So this so video. Nice. Yeah, the video will be saved, yeah, absolutely. It was a little choppy at the beginning, I will warn you, but yes. We might edit the beginning out, but... Oh, if we can. I don't, I don't know if we can. Oh, so, sure. Anyway. I'm sure it's fine. Sometimes. Well, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, but next Wednesday, we should be able to do another one of these. That's kind of what we're trying to do is every Wednesday at like 4.30 Central, we're trying to do a live about something, theme them, you know, a little bit if we can, or otherwise just try to smash through questions um, as, you know, as fast as possible. Um, actually, you know what? Let's try this. Uh, what do you guys think the next theme should be? Yeah, let's give them a second. Let's take a couple suggestions, and by a couple, it'll probably be just like right. While you're typing that like out, shrouds chat. I know some of you are asking why is mm -hmm. night vision so expensive. The analog night vision is brutally hard to make. Yeah, there are crystals that. that are grown molecules thick for some of the Go sensors. The, the screen has to be built underwater. The whole thing has to be assembled in a vacuum. There's weird metals. Like if you read the process, it's like something out of an ancient alchemy manual or possibly the Silmarillion. So uh, they're not getting cheaper anytime soon. Digital night vision is the thing that's going to make things cheaper, but it'll be a little while before it gets here. A couple years. Yep. I'm just waiting. Now it's, 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 it's finally caught up. Oh, it's, it's, like, it's 20 right. seconds behind oh, okay. due to stream lives. Oh, here they come. Here they come. Okay. Books, um, books, belts, 300, 300 books plate carriers, uh, plate carriers, suppressors. I probably need to do kit. Weapon uh, retention? Yeah, I'm well, not that's doing a that. holster, not, surely. No, he's talking about, like, <laughs> like John Wicking people. Well, no, um, you're not allowed to do this. That's more than six I'm not allowed to do feet. that. Yeah, that's I'm not allowed to do that. I'm a civilian. I'm not allowed to talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, places to shoot for pores. Uh, dry fire? Outdoors. Uh, no, not indoors, but outdoors. Um, armor, spiritus, armor, plate carriers, armor. <laughs> yeah. 300 blackout. 300, wow, that's 300 blackout. That's what this gun is right here. Um, that's interesting. Drew looking things. No. Um, it's not a whole show. No, no, it's not. That would be bad. Um, we won't do that. Uh, <laughs> armor. Okay, well, I guess that settles it. The next one will be on plate carriers, armor setup, and different stuff like that. Um, I can bring out a bunch of my different rigs uh, from, you know, Cry, Spiritus, uh, First Spear, a bunch of different folks. So we can talk about that and uh, take some questions on that and see what happens. I only need a bigger table. This table will fit like two plate carriers. Yeah. We're done. Very good. Well, thank you so much oh, yeah. for watching, guys. Obviously, this was long and boring, but at the same time, it only scratched the surface a lot. of night vision and how to use it. So, there's a lot more stuff. But hey, thanks, guys. Tune in uh, next Wednesday, I guess.